Hey guys, I want to welcome you to the weekly Wednesday for the Financial Freedom Newsletter where every week, every Wednesday, we delve into something inspirational, motivational, something excerpt taken from the Financial Freedom Weekly Newsletter. Wherever you are, if you're listening on Spotify, uh, iTunes, Google, be sure to click the like, subscribe, share, comment. And without ado, let's get into the show. Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast. And I'm really excited about today's guest. Um, and he's going to talk to us all about real estate. And he does a little bit of real estate investing, coaching. And we're just going to delve into the mindset of an entrepreneur. And it's going to be a fantastic discussion. So Kyle, welcome. Christopher, thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, I know a little bit about you, but you know, tell the audience about you um, and uh, how you got started, how you got into real estate, and we'll go from there. Yeah. So I uh, come from a construction background, um, went to school at a small school in Michigan, uh, Northern Michigan University is a small school, went there for construction management, four-year degree, ended up graduating, going into um, oil and gas, working for an industrial construction company. You know, it's kind of a classic story. You start working for someone and realizing it's just not a good fit, right? You're just like, something's not clicking for me. And I was making good money, was able to save up a good good amount of money while I was working for them over a course of about four and a half years between my internship, which was two summers in a row and working for them full-time out of college. So I was making good money, which obviously made, you know, making made the construction worthwhile you know you're making good money it makes kind of the road bumps a little bit easier if you will but um yeah that was kind of a, a spark and i was just like i don't want to do this forever i got to figure out some other avenues i was putting money in my 401k i was making six percent but i'm like this is just not this isn't working for me and that's i started listening to a lot of people like grant cardone brandon turner kind of the the moguls if you will of real estate and reading their books just kind of going through a massive information stage and in 2019, I was like, you know what, we're just going to get into this. So I bought my first duplex in 2019. And really, you know, I'll kind of let you, you know, ask questions as you want. But just from there on, I was able to scale to right around 75 units right now. We flip about two to three houses uh, a month. So this really, really just kind of took off from there. And I think like many people, and there's so many different avenues out there, but like many people, they just, they kind of want out of the rat race, you know, and they think it takes forever. They think it takes a long period of time. You just got to pick your vehicle. And for me, the vehicle was real estate. Yeah, it's quite interesting. You know, your uh, your story is not uncommon, especially after 2020. Um, I started my journey in 2008. You know, I was making, I was, you know, my first job, making decent. And, and then I was just like, what the hell am I here for? And just like, you know, working for, you know, this corporate machine and, you know, doing nothing. And so, um, yeah, so yeah, it's quite, and then, you know, it's great that, you know, people are starting to wake up. Um, so tell us more about, you know, your, um, you know, your, what your company does, um, you know, real estate, especially in this time and age, and, um, you know, you know, these, these times are really crazy interest rates. And, uh, I'm just curious to hear about that, that aspect. For sure. Early on, you know, 2021, uh, with everything going on with the pandemic and especially the real estate market, I mean, the hottest time in the history of real estate, especially when I was alive, but even, you know, my, my parents and grandparents, they, they tell stories where they've never seen anything like it either. So I really got in at appreciation was a great thing, but it was super, super competitive. So started buying um, all single families, all duplexes, everything under four units. I don't own anything over four units. Uh, we were strictly a volume company. So buying single families and duplexes is really our niche. And we just kept doubling down. And we, the way we financed these is we were able to find some private investors to purchase them in a short period of time. So we'd go in, we would negotiate with these private lenders and or yeah private lenders investors if you will and say hey guys you know this is a competitive market i need cash i have a proven track record where i was doing conventional loans for about i don't know maybe three or four transactions so i had a little bit of a, a track record saying this is what i'm able to do i'll get you a return on your money in a short period of time and i was able to go in and you know get a property and turn it back and pay them back in in two three four months and once they saw that 
really it was sky the sky's the limit. And luckily for me, having that construction background is more specifically construction management background. That's all about real estate. Real estate, you have to understand how to run your numbers. But once you know how to underwrite the deals, the renovation and the construction part is really where you're going to make your money. Because you know, you you go into a property you don't know what you're looking at. You could go twenty, thirty thousand thousand over budget. And in the Midwest, those type of margins will ruin a deal. So for me, I had a lot of leverage with construction background where I was able to go in, keep my margins really tight from a standpoint of construction. We always hit them a little bit over, a little bit under, but for the most part, we were, we were really able to scale. And then it was just developing systems and methods, bringing in employees and just kind of scaling from there. And like I said, now we're doing two to three flips a month at this current point where we're really having a tough time um, finding a reason to buy rentals. So we're just buying uh, flips to build capital to put us in a position in the future to really pounce on um, opportunity. And there's still opportunity out there. But when you're talking 9% interest rates, I'm just at this point, I would rather flip and, you know, build up capital, get in a strong position so that I can pounce on um, real estate when it does correct and, and either interest rates go down or prices significantly drop. But Right now, we're just flipping, focusing on flipping, and I've got a lot of coaching clients that I'm working with too, showing them how to co- uh, flip real estate wholesale and the opportunities that are out there for rentals. We're still doing that as well. Hmm, interesting. I mostly, uh, I mostly talk to um, people in real, this during these times. I mostly talk to uh, industrial and self storage, and um, mm. you know, you're the first flipper that I've talked to, um, you know, in August of 2023, you know, is that strategy, uh, relevant? Why do you consider flipping as opposed to, um, you know, a lot of investors are looking for either, um, where the numbers work. Um, I'm just curious that your rationale for that. Yeah. So at at this time we're still buying rentals. I'm just saying at the volume, you know, back in 2022, 2021, we were buying three to five rental properties a month. So we were scaling big time. And right now we're at maybe one to two a month. So we're still buying rentals. Um, but the, the deal has to make sense. It's gotta be a really, really good deal. So we're still buying them and we're still cash flowing. It's just, we've kind of leveled out a little bit where if we can build up more capital by, and I don't, I'm not a person that's going to be out of my lane. Um, I'm not going to start going, you know, commercial, retail, industrial. For me, I would rather dominate my lane, double down where I am and just keep pushing. And I think uh, right now in, in my life, I just have blinders on. So for us to be able to build up capital, we can leave a little bit more money into the deal. So we're, you know, 2%, 3% interest rate. It's pretty easy to cash flow in a market where you're talking two to three percent interest rate. I mean, you're talking some pretty cheap money, but nine percent, you might have to buy your debt down a little bit to cash flow a little bit better. And that's what we're doing. And we got a long term plan. So where we might leave 20, 30, 40 grand into a property, we fully plan on intending in three to five years when interest rates correct to get that money back out. Because for me, the farther your capital can go, the more, you know, the wealthier you're, you're going to be. A lot of people will buy one property in cash where, you know, in the Midwest, $150,000 duplex in cash, I would rather take 150 and spread it across 20, 30 properties um, and just keep capital rolling. So we are buying rentals. We're just making sure our margin makes sense. Mm, yeah, interesting. So it's quite interesting um, how you, uh, especially how you um, described it. And um, the other question is, um, you know, there's this question about interest rates and I've talked to a lot of um, investors and um, high net worth, and then there some are in the camp, such as you, who are thinking that interest rates are going to draw, um, correct, like go down. But then there's some that are thinking, you know, interest rates are going to basically the last um, since 2009, you know, basically they reset all the interest rates to literally zero. And then now it's another reset interest rate to, you know, four to 5% and they plan to keep it, um, you know, unless something like collapses or, you know, we have a, another, you know, Lehman or a COVID or something, but uh, what are your thoughts on the, in- the interest rates? Yeah. I think if we look over a course of history, right, we, we can control the controllables. And when we look at uh, eight, 9% interest rate, if they sit there for the next two, three years, like, you just control what you can control. If they sit there, if they keep going up, we'll keep adapting. Um, I believe they will correct just because of, 
I think they're going to have to, especially with with areas that you you you're running into affordability problems, right? Where people are making um, you know fifty, sixty thousand dollars and looking for three hundred thousand dollar houses at eight nine percent interest rates, and they can't afford it. So we have low inventory, we have high interest rates. You have a plethora of buyers. Something has to give, right? Either you inventory has to increase, builders can't keep up, right? Everything's kind of just like working against each other. And it's just, there's so much in the real estate market where it's just not making a whole lot of sense. Um, like you were saying, everyone's got their opinions. Everyone has an idea what they think might happen. But for me, it's all about adaptability because we can only control what we can control. I can't control the marketplace. I can't control the interest rates. What I can do is I can control how I adapt and how I change my business. And I don't think I'm going to have to change it too much because especially in the Midwest, you know, you're talking leveraged debt at $80,000 and places are still renting for twelve, thirteen, fourteen hundred a month. I mean, you're, it's still a win regardless of um, regardless of the interest rate. So we're still locking in 30 year debt at eight, nine percent interest rate. If they if we're, we're cash flowing today, if they fall, great. If they stay, great. If they go up, we're still locked in at that rate. So though we at one point, maybe we were cash flowing 500 bucks per unit. Right now we're at 200, 250 per unit unit, mm. but it's mm. still positive ar arbitrage. So for me, it doesn't really matter too much. And, you know, I wish I had this genie that was telling me what the marketplace was going to do. And I'd be super rich if I knew exactly what was going to happen. Right. Um, but for me, I'm just going to stay educated. I'm going to adapt along the way. And that's what me and my students are going to do. And, and we're just going to keep, you know, weathering the storm as it comes. The point um, to be concerned is where you over leverage and then you basically buy assets at inflated prices and then you have a market collapse or correction then you're in trouble because, you know, you, you can't, you sell at a loss and you can't really, re, if you know, you try to refinance, you know, you're going to be paying more in interest. And um, yeah, it's quite a interesting thing. Um, what are your thoughts on commercial? Because I've heard commercial real estate is actually, you know, that's another domino to fall because of the work from home. And so I'm just, I've been keeping an eye on that. Yeah, to be honest, I, you know, I'm not in commercial, but if we just think about what makes sense, I mean... I know tons of companies that b built brand new office buildings and COVID happened. Everyone went home and there's this state of the art, multi-million dollar property sitting vacant. And I mean, what do you do? People have found a niche at working at home. Um, you know, it kind of goes into the, you know, I hear a lot of people saying they don't like working from home. It's not healthy for me. They need to get out of the house. That's a, another conversation. But I think one of the, if there's anything positive that came out of, you know, the COVID timeframe, it's that you can accomplish the same amount working in different environments. I think the team atmosphere is still really important, but from a company standpoint, I think they realize that they can accomplish a lot of things through using, you know, AI and technology and working from different places. And, um, you know, traveling has become a big thing. And that's why Airbnbs are such a hot market. And it, I don't really know about commercial, to be honest. I think office space, I will never touch because of something that you just brought up. I think that, you know, people are becoming a lot more versatile. We're working behind computers all the time. I mean, you, you and I are having a conversation over Zoom, right? Like people, people no longer have to meet face to face. They can have great conversation over the phone, through Zoom, through Teams. So for me, I'm not ever going to dip into uh, the office space for now. Mm -hmm. Things always change, but for now, I'm I'm personally going to stay clear because of what you just brought up. And I think a lot of people are starting to work from home. They're finding a reason to do that. I think companies are finding justification why they don't have to have massive buildings, and they can accomplish the exact same that you know they were prior. Yeah, yeah. Now you have like big cities like San Francisco, Manhattan. Um, you know, all these people moving out because just the cost of living is just so you know egregious and. Um, really interesting and um so how can so talk about the uh, work that you do with clients how you help clients um and then uh you know how can people contact you follow you on your socials check out your work etc yeah so my clients um it's all one-on-one -on -one. i actually hired a coach to help my clients so 
a lot of people will have programs, right? They'll have students and everyone will talk about how you can make more money, you know, having a course. But for me, I like the one-on-one conversations. I like helping individuals, um, building that connection. So it's a one-on-one coaching program and it's a guaranteed product that I get you into a piece of real estate, either a flip, a wholesale or a rental property with none of your own money, which is what I'm doing. Um, buying it with none of my own money, you use private lenders, and we just basically set up your whole company from the top to bottom. And it's a one on one program, uh, me and, and, and my clients, and we've had great success rate. And I would say the best, if, you know, if that's something that interests your your listeners, the best place is just to reach out is just to go to my Instagram, which is KJ underscore root, shoot me a DM, follow me and we can have a conversation. Um, and if it, and if it doesn't end up working out and you just want to talk, I love talking to people just like the conversation we're having today. So just reach out and give me a follow and we'll just go from there. Um, it's a really great conversation. Um, like I said, I've always, you know, real estate I, was how I got my financial freedom, cool. but you have to really understand, understand sure. numbers and it's very hands-on too. Um, but, uh, that's where I got all my business skills. So, um, and for all the li- audience out there. Um, Kyle's resources will be in the links and show notes. And, um, I'm always talking to people trying to get a sense of where everything is going and, um, really interesting insights. So, and I love this idea where you stay in your lane, just double down on where you're, where you're doing and kind of keep focused. Uh, so thanks so much. And thanks for coming on to the podcast. Yeah. Thanks Christopher. I hope you really enjoyed that wonderful inspirational motivational piece again if you wherever you are listening if you liked it be sure to like comment share subscribe we're on everywhere spotify itunes google amazon audible and without much ado be sure to thank this show's sponsors and we'll see you next week